So the method of doing the schema extension that we're going to look at now is the most direct method, uh, just importing the um, schema updates direct into the Active Directory. It's got far fewer dependencies. Uh, you can run it from a 32-bit 2003 domain controller, for example. Um, you don't have to have .NET or PowerShell or anything like that installed. So let's have a look and see how we do it. So I'm going to run it from a domain controller. And what I'm going to do is, um, first, I'm going to get the schema files. Now, the schema files are on the um, link 2013 media. If we pop in there, under support, you'll see a folder called schema. So what I'm going to do is just copy that to my C drive. There we go. And if we have a look in there, you'll see the schema extension files. Now we're going to use a utility called LDIFDE to import these files. Just move those out of the way. You can see that I've already um, got the format of the command here in my notepad. And what we're going to do is fire up a DOS prompt. Pop into my schema directory and I'm going to import those files. But they need to go in in a certain order. The first one is this external schema LDF. I'm just going to get the name. So we need to modify this command. That's the name of the server that houses your um, schema master. That's the name of the file that we're going to be importing. So we're going to import the external schema first. That um, specifies the context and the J specifies where the log files are going to go. So I'm going to copy that and just pop it into my DOS prompt here. So I let that run, let it take a moment. There we go. Now what you'll see is a log file has appeared in there. So if you have a look in that log file, it'll tell you everything that L that LDF has just done. Okay, so uh, bear in mind we we'll probably overwrite this, so it may be worth just renaming that. So that was for our external schema. The next one we need to do is the server, which is this one. So again, we just need to modify that file name. and then copy that command into our DOS prompt. Just let that one run. One's finished. Again, you can see um, that it's created a log file there. Okay, so I'm just going to rename that one. So the next one we're going to do is the back compatible one, which is that. So if you want, another way of doing this is, of course, is just going up and editing the file name. Uh, just let that run. doesn't take very long. Again, I'm just going to rename the uh, log file. So the last one we need to run is that one, the version schema. So let that run, 
There you go, real quick, and again it's created a log file. So there we go, that's how we manually do the schema update. So let's have a look at uh, now when we go to install our Link 2013 server uh, and see what the difference is. I can switch across to my uh, domain member machine now. There you go. Let's fire up the Link installation. Just fire up the Link 2013 media. It'll ask us to install the um, Visual C++. So let, let that run. Let take a moment. now asking us where to put the installation media so we'll accept the defaults accept the license and then just let that finish we go now the deployment wizard you can see that prepare active directory is showing up as partial that's what we'd expect if we pop into that menu you should see that the schema preparation now has uh, been shown as complete what we can also do at this point is pop into the link server management shell which is there and we can use the command get dash cs ad server schema what that should do is tell us the current schema prep state there we go schema version state is current so we're now ready to go ahead and install our link 2013 so so just by using a, a command line tool we've imported the um, schema extensions and we've done that schema prep without having to do all the uh, the prereqs